بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Pay close attention because we're going to cover the entire plan for you to start your cybersec career with a step-by-step -step explanation of what you need, how you can start, where you should start, and how long it will take, plus how much money you can make in the field. Most importantly, before the end of this video, I'll show you how to do all of it for free. The most important factor of getting into cybersecurity is setting up a solid foundation because if you don't, you'll have trouble at almost every step of the way. Without a solid foundation, you're just waiting for the entire structure to crumble at any moment. Meaning, not learning the basics can honestly cause a lot of headache down the road. So you definitely want to focus on your foundations and build a very strong foundation on top of which then you will incorporate by design your cybersecurity learning. Now to start off, we need to focus on a few areas. But before we go to step one, I would highly recommend spending some time on step zero. And that's as simple as learning how to type. It's surprising, but it can tremendously help with a minimal effort on your part. Okay, step one, you need to understand hardware. Not everything, but at the very least, you need to understand what the basic components of a computer are and also have the hands-on practice to be able to identify different parts physically and their pros and cons. The ideal certification to go with that is A+. It's solid, it's basic, it's well-recognized, and it helps you with the gatekeepers, meaning HR. And we'll talk about gatekeepers later to find jobs. With that being said, I am not recommending in any way that you actually get certified. It's a great idea if you have the money, but if cash is limited, then I would go do the cert in everything but the actual exam. Meaning study for it, go through the videos, do the labs and any exercises, and even take practice exams, but don't actually sit for the exam so you don't have to pay the amount of money that they require. The skills of A-plus are very important whether you take the exam or not for your foundation. So understanding hardware components, the operating system, updating it, patching it, which is related to security heavily, software troubleshooting for applications, compatibility, drivers, basic networking and troubleshooting, virtualization, cloud computing, which is a major part of our lives now, and many organizations are moving towards the cloud. So that is very important to understand too. The second skill is even more important because it teaches you about networking. It's very important to know the basics of networking. So think IP addressing, subnetting, routers and switches, your configuration, in short, Network architecture and design at the basic level is important to know and good to understand. There are a lot of choices for certifications in networking. We'll go with three popular choices. You can go with Network Plus from CompTIA, which is generic, easy to do, and simple enough, but doesn't provide as much value as Cisco CCNA, for example, which is vendor specific, much more difficult, but has a lot of hands-on practice. You can even go with something like AWS's Cloud Networking Specialty, which covers Cloud networking for AWS. Again, vendor specific, but covers the networking essentials of the cloud. Out of the three, I would recommend CCNA from Cisco. It's much more difficult than either of the other two, but really provides tremendous value at understanding networks in depth at the basic level with a lot of hands-on practice. So that's the choice I would go with if you're gonna go for a certification in networking. Number three on the list of skills is Linux and understanding the command line. This is a very important operating system to understand and use comfortably if you're gonna be in any cybersecurity technical role because you'll most likely use it and come across it very frequently. Now, I'm not asking you to become a certified expert. I'm not even asking you to get certified, but just be comfortable with the Linux structure, how it works, know the basic 50 commands and your switches, which you're gonna come across during your journey, and also comfortably write a few bash scripts at the simple level. If you just have that, that's a great start to go with, right? And that's all you need for the time being. As you progress, you're gonna learn more and improve more and grow based on your need. Skill three really has two parts. We've already talked about part one, that is Linux, the command line, and some basic bash scripting. In addition to that, now would be a great time to add programming to the mix if you haven't already done so during your hardware and networking journeys. Because in those cases or those certifications, there is some automation required. So there's sometimes a basic touching upon programming skills. But if you haven't done so already, now is the time to start it up. Because you're already comfortable, you've done hardware, you've done networking, on the side you've been learning Linux, you can already write really bash scripts, which are very simple programs. So definitely learn programming alongside your journey to help augment your skill set. And you'd be surprised how much benefit it provides down the road. The fourth skill on the list is cloud. You need to understand the cloud because most organizations now around the world are moving towards the cloud or they're already on the cloud. So understanding the popular players, how the cloud works, what are regions, what are zones, what are the common services amongst the popular players like AWS, Azure, GCP, 
it's important and really helps and goes a long way in helping you in cybersecurity and building that foundation in cybersecurity. Now, I wouldn't recommend going for a foundational certificate from any of the popular vendors unless it's for free, which by the way, they do offer for free. What you wanna do is cover the foundations, course, lab, hands-on practice, all for free. And then when it's time to take the certification, save that money and go for a specialty for security or networking or AI or something else. But you don't wanna spend money on the foundational certificate unless it's for free. All right, let's switch gears here because I have something very interesting for you. We've talked about hardware, we've talked about networking, the command line in Linux, we've talked about the cloud. Now, another skill that's on the rise and booming right now, and it's really the hot stuff these days is AI. You want to incorporate this into your journey. You want to understand prompt design and prompt engineering to some extent because you can leverage that to learn your hardware, networking, and whatever you have better, easier, and faster. Given that it's relatively new, I don't know personally of any certifications that are very valuable, but I would say Google has some really good courses for free that you can attend. Coursera also has some free courses, and there might be other websites that have free courses as well available for people to attend. With that being said, though, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd, I'd love to be sponsored. So, so if you want to sponsor me, please go ahead and send me a message. But this is not a sponsored message of any kind. I'm just recommending what seems to be the best and you select based on your need and desire. At this point, it's great to start with your first cybersecurity certification. Everything until now has been about building a foundation. So if you have a solid foundation, you're good to go of getting into cybersecurity in terms of skills and certifications. Now, the choices of where to start are numerous, but I would say overall a basic, good quality certification that seems to be very popular and has value in terms of HR gatekeepers is Security Plus from CompTIA. It really does cover the basic skills of attacks, threats, and vulnerabilities, understanding architecture and design from a security standpoint, implementation related to PKI, cryptography, end-to-end -end security, so access management, things like that, operations and incident management, so if you're going to be in the SOC or that's a part of your earlier career, Really important to learn about that. And of course, GRC, which is a cornerstone of security, really. And even though it's boring for most of us, it is very important to understand what is GRC, what are the standards and frameworks and policies and procedures and things like that that need to be implemented. So it's a good solid start, provides good value, and overall, I say, is a good choice. Once you've cleared your Security Plus from CompTIA, if that's the route you chose, now is a good time to make a subtle distinction and a decision. And that is, you can go technical or non-technical. Because everything we've done so far has been about building a solid foundation. We've covered hardware, networking, Linux, programming, AI, a solid cybersecurity foundation as well. So your choices are pretty much limitless at the moment. And the question I have for you is, do you find the idea of working on technical things exciting? Maybe it's in the blue team where you're defending the networks or red team, you're an ethical hacker, a penetration tester, and you're attacking ethically to find network weaknesses or you're a malware analyst, cloud security architect, and the list goes on and on. All these are technical roles and require that you work in a technical aspect for the next several years if that's what you choose. And if that's what excites you, then you definitely want to go the technical route. Or maybe at this point you think to yourself, you know what? I've built a solid foundation, I continue to love InfoSec and cybersecurity, but I don't feel myself working in a technical aspect for the next several years. Maybe you're more gravitating towards GRC. You like policy making, risk management, compliance, strategy, sort of the non-technical roles. But the beauty of it is, because you have a solid foundation, you'd be great at those roles too, and you can communicate with the technical folks at a high level. We'll cover both certification options, but frankly, here's what I would recommend. I would recommend the best of both worlds. So you wanna be technical, work for several years in technical roles and really understand those in depth and work in different areas. And at the same time, you wanna be connected to strategy and planning and management and business and different business units. Because if you have the best of both worlds, you really are a key person that can communicate with technical people and become a translator to the business folks and vice versa. And that really is the role of a CISO or an expert cybersecurity consultant at a high level. And the bottom line is that's what really makes the most money in most cases. And of course, it's a lot of fun too because you get to work with technical folks and lead technical teams or consult for technical clients and you work with top management, the board of directors and so on and so forth and connect the two and provide the best value going forward. All right, we're at the final stretch here and the most important part is number one, what certifications to go for. 
Number two, how much money you can make with those and what's the best route and what's in demand. And number three, a clear and concise schedule of how long all of this should take you because that really matters too. So to begin with, the first thing is certifications. We're not going to cover everything. So your homework is to explore this at length, understand the roles and salaries and the responsibilities and the certifications that go with it. But very quick here, we have the feeder role, which is your background, which you're coming from, into your entry level within cybersecurity. That would be cybersecurity specialist, analyst, and other roles. And then we can go at the mid-level and advanced level. Now, an important thing here is these are some examples, right? The feeder roles could be anything. It could be someone working as a truck driver or they're in construction or a factory worker. Or maybe you're in non-IT at the moment with HR or you're into finance and you just want to come into cybersecurity. The great thing is you can expect these kind of numbers when you get in. As a cybersecurity specialist, there are currently 10,135 job openings in the U.S. The average salary is 107000 For analyst, it's 100000 Intrusion, 89000 Incident intrusion analyst. The IT auditor is 111000 Now, these numbers may be skewed because of where you live. Maybe you're not even in the U.S. Maybe you're watching this from Africa or India or Middle East or wherever you are. But overall, there is a high demand for cybersecurity. And the numbers really are dictated by what's the demand in each country and what your local currency is and some other factors. But overall, like I said, there's a high demand for cybersecurity. Another point here is you can also look at the skills and certifications that go with it. So if you click on these, you can actually look at the job title itself and what kind of top skills and certifications go with it. So for a cybersecurity engineer, you look on the right, you're looking at the top skills. That's what you need. And on the left, you're looking at the certifications such as CISSP, CISA, CISM, the GIC family of certifications, and Security Plus. And the list goes on and on. So you can look at this at your own leisure and at your own time. But overall, a great website that really helps you connect things together and understand what are the roles and where your interests might be and what you need to be able to pursue that role. As a bonus point, before we jump into the timeline and schedule, let's quickly cover ethical hacking and penetration testing because people really want to know what is the certification to pursue. Now, if you have covered everything we've talked about so far, you have a solid foundation and genuinely understand hardware, networking, basic scripting, you know, some programming, you're good with Linux, then I would say it's a great time or a great choice to start off with OSCP from Offensive Security. It's a great certification. It's not easy by any means, but it is an entry-level certification for a solid pen tester, right? And puts you in a really good track. With that being said, you might want to go for something easier if that's too difficult for you and go for something like EJPT from INE or something similar. But I would think that it might be a waste of time and money if you already have all the foundation covered within the realm of networking hardware, basic cybersecurity with Security Plus, and other areas. So it might be money better spent and time better spent with something like OSCP. Or you could go with an expensive route with GIAC certifications that are super expensive, but they're also very good overall. So the year penetration testing certification is not bad either. My recommendation though is OSCP. I find that provides the best value for entry-level pen testers that require or are looking towards getting a solid understanding of what to pursue later in their career in pen testing. Okay, folks, we're finally at the point where we can talk about cybersecurity roadmap along with the timeline. And mind you, this is a schedule with the certifications being a part of it, meaning that it's scheduled with the timeline, considering the fact that you're actually going to take the exam itself, which is more time consuming compared to if you just moved on without taking the exam to the next step. And the reason for that is the HR gatekeepers. The fact of the matter is you rarely ever will talk to the hiring manager directly in the first spot or in the first place. Normally what happens is resumes and CVs are filtered by HR who don't have a clue for the most part about cybersecurity. They're either given a list of search to look for and filter through that, which is where the gatekeeping part comes in, or in worst case scenarios, they're not given anything and they have to look those up themselves online. So in that case, they go for the popular cybersecurity certs and based on that filter people. And if anybody doesn't have XYZ certification, they don't even make the cut in the first line. Now, mind you, the schedule is very generous, right? You can do this in a lot shorter amount of time. We have our typing that can be discounted completely, meaning that you don't have to do this sequentially. It's something to do on the side. Step one is A+, plus. shouldn't take you more than 75 days. You can even do it in 60 days or less, depending on your study schedule, how much you're able to consume and study per day, and how much time you really have. CCNA is a heavy hitter, but if you take A plus first, you should ease into it and be comfortable with the idea of test taking, of studying, of doing labs. At most, it should take you 90 days, really. You can even do it in 60 days. It's two exams, or you can take both as one exam, 
but 90 days is the limit I would give it, nothing more than that. For Linux and programming, you have no certification, but it is important to understand the concepts. And even though they're staggered here, they're not sequential. So you don't have to wait to finish Linux and command line in order for you to move to programming. So step one is 30 days. But as you see, it starts on June 20th, yet the step after it starts immediately 10 days later or 11 days later on the 1st of July. So you're going to really, after 10 days of getting comfortable with the Linux operating system command line, start slowly but surely working on programming. The cloud and AI shouldn't require a lot of time, 15 days each, and they can be done in parallel. You don't have to do them sequentially because they're easy enough and quick enough to learn in a very short amount of time. Two weeks is more than enough to learn, especially given, again, the fact that you've already covered everything before that. Now comes your security foundation, Security Plus. This should not take more than 60 days. Some people are able to do it in 30 to 45 days as well. It really depends how fast you can study and how much you can consume and understand and retain. For our specialty certification, I went with OSCP from Offensive Security. The reason is it's a popular topic, and like I said, people want to know more about it. So in this case, I would recommend learning some web hacking before signing into OSCP and buying the package or the certification along with the lab. You want to go with something like Burp Suit Academy for free. You want to do some CTF, Capture the Flag, Hacking Playgrounds with Hack the Box or Try Hack Me and other sites, depending on what suits your needs. They're all for free. You don't have to do this step, but I would highly recommend it so you're very comfortable with OSCP. Now, OSCP itself should not take more than 90 days. That's really the max. People can do it in 60 days as well. Some even do it in 30 days. So that's really what it takes. And at the end of the day, these are the choices. This is the schedule and the plan. Your schedule may differ. You could probably do everything here within eight months. Some might be even able to pull it off in six months. It is very hard though. I mean, the choices are limitless. You can go the route that you want and customize as needed. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, if you have any suggestions or if you want specific videos in the future, post them and I'll try to make them, inshallah. Have a good one.